word of God is also God. So though they are one, in functions, they are three. So the Holy Spirit is called the third person of the Godhead. That's why the Bible says that be anxious for nothing but in all things prayer, supplication with, and then he said with, with thanksgiving. When God decides to honor you, it does not matter. He does not compromise on it. Because their faith is in Christ. Once he has said he will honor you, and he honors people of faith. How many people are 99 today? Give back. But when God is in the matter, when Shaddai appears, the man that introduced sin into the world, when he was 500, he gave back to sin. The day you receive Jesus into your heart, that was the day you qualified. He is our qualification. The Bible says that herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we. I'm sure Psalm 91 is, when I was in class four, I had a teacher. Oh, if I knew I was going to be a man of God, I would have done what he said we should do. He wanted us to memorize Psalm 91 verse 1 to 16. And every morning he has a king. You have to recite and then he will lash you. You know, I was part of the stubborn boys in the class. So, we will not do it, you know. He said, lash me, lash me. Pop, 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 pop. And then you go. But one day, I, one day I just said, let me do this. So, I took the Bible and I, I memorized I think I was the first person to, be, to, memor uh, to, to uh, recite from verse 1 to verse 16. I didn't understand it. Because he said we should memorize. So he that dwelleth in the secret of the most shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I said, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in my trust. You know. We used to rap, so we will rap it in addition. Yeah. And I know some of you know these um, verses. So it's, it's common in your ears. The Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty too. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. The word surely is amazing. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This is the essence of Psalm 91, this verse. How he put it in the middle is amazing. But this was the reason, if you understand from verse 1, when I start explaining to you, you will understand that the reason for Psalm 91 is this one. Eight. Only with thine eye shall thou behold and see the reward of, of the wicked. Uh -huh. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Amazing. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in, in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon, shall thou trample under feet. <laughs> Can you trample over a lion? Like you see a lion, you see. Because he has set his love upon thee, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he had known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. Oh, you are not here. With long life I will satisfy him and I will show him. 
I will show you what salvation here is. With long life, I will satisfy him. With long life, I will say with long life, he will satisfy me. Okay, so that's wrong. Say with long life, he has satisfied me. And has shown me his salvation. Say with long life, he has satisfied me. You know why he has satisfied you? Why? Eternal life. So you die not. You are full. You see, the word satisfy here talks about somebody eating and eating until when we give you the best food you like, you don't even have appetite for. Like you are so satisfied that an extra food will make you vomit. So he says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Okay. Beautiful. Now, the essence of Psalm 91 was for the future. So you see, I will, I will, I will. Okay? And so it talks about the future for the coming of Jesus because the last verse tells us that I will show him my salvation. So it talks about the appearance during the time of the appearance of Jesus and beyond. Then he said, a thousand shall fall at the right side. He's talking about the tribulation, the troubles that will come even when Christ comes. So he's telling you that in this time, you need to know these promises that have become reality, even as of today. For me, when COVID came, this, were, this was the chapter of the word of God that sustained my faith. Because he said, a thousand shall fall and ten, at the right and ten thousand at the other side. He said, and it shall not come nigh thee. And exactly that is what happened. You heard in your area, in your offices, people were sick people. But it did not come nigh your dwelling. And then in the verse 8, he says, He said, only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. I'm not saying your friend who caught the virus was the wicked. Huh? Yes, sir. So I'm just, I just want to share Psalm 91 with you, explain to you, for you to have an understanding of Psalm 91. And you can memorize everything. It's not difficult to memorize the scripture at all. And then you say to yourself, say to yourself, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, you know, my God in Him, I will trust. You know, you, you begin to recite, tell yourself. The, what, there's one beautiful thing about the Psalms. Anytime you recite it, you feel God's presence. You know, yeah. Yeah, you feel it. Okay. So, go to back. So, we'll, we'll dwell on the secret place tonight. Somebody say, the secret place. The secret place. Okay. So, he began. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So first of all, he's trying to tell you that the secret place at that time was not known. <laughs> it wasn't known. So he's just telling you that the one that will dwell there shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Can you see that? But he introduced two things here. Now, in the whole, let me start from here. In the whole Psalm 91, verses 1 to 16, God introduced five of his names. Which should tell you that he was trying to tell you about grace. You get it? Anytime you see a particular word in the Bible repeated about five times, the thought is that he's, he's trying to show you Christ in there. On Sunday, when I taught you about praise, we saw 12 mentions of praise that showed you about the govern government of God. You remember? So don't just read your Bible. So I will show you these five words, uh, five names that God showed here, and then I continue. So he said, because when we find the five words, five names of God, we, that's where we find the secret place. The secret place is found in between two of his names. That he introduced. God, eh? I'm sure if you used to play chess, 
or puzzles you. <laughs> the way you can, you can put the thing together and the Holy Ghost is the spectacles you need to be able to see what God has done. I mean, how would, how would we have known this? Okay, now, the first name that he showed here, he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. So he mentioned the first name that he introduced called Most High. Then he said, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Another name. So that's the second one. So the first name is Most High. The second name is what? Almighty. Then in the second place, he said, he that, I will say of another name, Lord. Three. He is my refuge, my fortress. Another name, my God. In him will I trust. How many are they? Four. Then he never mentioned anything God. Let's read. Four. He said, surely, now he began, he began to tell you what, what will happen. He shall surely deliver thee from the snow of the fallen, from the north and pestilence. Uh -huh. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Oh. And under his wings. You know who he's talking about? And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So you see there's no God mentioned anywhere. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day. Uh -huh. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the, for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Uh -huh. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You don't see any God here. Only with an eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord. This is not, this is not a new name. He just mentioned the Lord up there. So there's no, it's not new. Which is my refuge? Even the most high, you see. So no new. Thy habitation. Uh -huh. There shall no evil before thee. Neither shall play come nigh thy dwelling. Uh -huh. 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Uh -huh. They shall bear thee up in thy hands lest thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Uh -huh. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. <laughs> because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he had known my name. Uh -huh. He shall call upon me and I, shall, I will answer him. I will be, I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Uh -huh. Then he said, he introduced his last name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The word salvation is his last name. Okay. Can you see the name? Yes, All right. So let's look at the Hebrew names for these ones. Then you will understand what I mean. Now in verse 1, there are two names there. Most High and what? Almighty. Okay. Now, the word Most High in the Hebrew is called Elion. Elion. I will explain what it means. Elion. And then the Almighty means Shaddai. So it means that he that dwelleth in the secret place of Elion shall abide under the shadows of Shaddai. Okay? Yes, then the other two names, uh huh. I will say of the Lord, the word the Lord here means Yahweh, Yod He Vav He. I will say of the Lord. He shall be uh, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God. Now the word God here is the word Elohim. So we've seen Elion, we've seen Shaddai, we've seen what? Yahweh, and then we've seen what? Elohim. Then in verse 16, he said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
The Hebrew word for salvation here is Yeshua. Yeshua. Immediately you should be catching some revelation. What he's trying to say is that and all these things will be done in the name of Yeshua. Follow me. All these things that he has said will take place in the name of Yeshua. So what is the secret place then? So there's a hint. God is giving us hints. Where the secret place is found. Now he said, with long life I will satisfy him. He kept talking about him. Him. Who is the him? Who is the him? It, can, it cannot be Jesus. Who is the him? The him is anyone that is found in the secret place. Anyone. And there are promises that he gave. Go to 15. Look, he said, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. He's talking about a him. And that him is anyone. Anyone that he finds, he finds himself in the secret place. So the question is, where is the secret place? Verse 1. So why did God introduce two of his names? Why didn't he start with the Lord? Why didn't he start with God? Why did he start with Elion and Shaddai? Why? Because the book of Psalm is not the first book that was written. You always need to go back to the first book and look at what we call the law of first mention. What is the law of first mention? The law of first mention gives you an idea of what the meaning of, of, of something God has mentioned in this word. Or a function of his word. So for, for example, the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without void and without form. And they say, The first time we heard of the Holy Spirit or, or the Holy Ghost, he said, and the Spirit of God moved. That was the first time we heard of the Holy Ghost. And the, the law of first mention tells us what he does. The Bible says that, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Which tells you, the Holy Spirit is a mover. The reason why you can't stay, you cannot say, I have a stagnant life. Is because you are full of the Spirit that moves. So a lot of people pray unnecessarily against every spirit of stagnation. It's in your mind. You have not known the truth yet. The day you find out the truth, you will know you cannot be stagnant. He said you shall move from glory to glory. From blessing to blessing. From grace to grace. From favor to favor. That is who you are. You keep moving. Say I move. The Bible says, and Isaac works great. And he moved forward until he became what? Very great. So you, <laughs> Isaac was not born again. You that you are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit that moves. How can you say me, my life is stagnant. My life is just at, at the same side. You are, conf you, you are advertising freely. What is not? Advertise your reality. I move with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I, Daniel, I move with the speed of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I see my life move with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Do you know what you are doing? You are confessing homologia. You are confessing reality. What is the reality? The Bible says that, and the Spirit of God moved. And anytime he moves, the word will follow. He moved upon the face of the deep. Now, look at, the, look at the place where he moved. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at it all. And the earth was without form. And void. Meaning empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
This is not a, a place, an area you would like to you would like to be. But the Holy Spirit did not advertise the void, the without form, the darkness. He did not advertise that. The Bible advertised the Holy Spirit moving. Look, he said, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He considered all of them. <laughs> because the earth had been judged then. Then look at the verse 3. Immediately, and God said, anytime a man is full of the Spirit, and you consider and actualize and see that you are moving, God gives you a rema to accompany you. See, anytime you see your life, me, my life is not moving. Satan gives you, he gives you words to speak. What can come out of my life? Look at all my friends, they are moving forward. Look at my life. You are speaking your life into the back. But when you begin to say, I don't care what I see, for the Holy Ghost is not a stagnant spirit. He is a moving spirit. Therefore, my life moves forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as Isaac moved forward and became great, so is my life. I'm moving forward. Forward with the speed of the Holy Ghost. That is the understanding of that song. I move with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he's a mover. So there's no Christian who knows the word of God that, that declares my life is stagnant. Why? You, you, because you are seeing somebody and so you are telling yourself you are not moving. We are not moving on the same path. He is moving on one path in one direction. I am also moving in one path in the other direction. His path is not my path. Somebody say I move. You see, you, you can change your world with this your mouth. That is what you need. Stop advertising the devil. You advertise the devil wrongly. Freely. Oh, what is happening to my life? Do you even have one? Do you even have life? When the Bible says your life is hid in Christ. And he has given us his life. See, you have not come to the realization that the life you have is the victorious life. I show you this. Colossians chapter 3 verse, verse 3 or so. I show you this. Oh, I cannot be stagnant. No, 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 no. You know, sometimes we are like we are like the catapult. You know the catapult. Sometimes we feel like that is how God plays his game. It feels like you are going back, oh, and you are seeing others going forward. It looks like you are going back. Don't advertise the devil. Because when we leave you in the catapult, <laughs> the Bible says that what eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. This is what God has prepared for them that love him. So, so the devil tells you, look, your life is going back. Look at you. Look at your friends. They are moving forward. And you're like, everything I do, I don't know, but I keep moving back. Backwards and backwards. You don't say that because our life is not supposed to be backwards. Our life is forward. God is positioning you and strategically positioning you so that he can release you out of the catapult. Boom. We are like the arrows of the world. <laughs> there is no hunter or fighter that releases an arrow like this. We pull. God is that hunter. And we are the arrow. And Jesus is the bow. <laughs> now, do you know Jesus is the bow? Do you know the rainbow is Jesus? <laughs> Jesus is the bow. You, you, you and I. We are the arrows in the bow. God is that hunter. See, when a man is holding a bow and arrow, and then he's, he's gauging a place, I might not see what he is gauging at. Is that correct? I might not be able to tell where he's. See, if I stand here and I do this, you have no idea whether I am aiming at the camera guys, or I am aiming at the next house, or I am aiming at. You have no idea. All you know is that I am stretching. That is our lives. 
That's why the Bible says that the wind bloweth where it listeth. He said nobody knows where it is coming from, nor where it is where it is going. But we can hear the sound thereof. And the Bible says, So is any man that is born of the spirit. See, as you sit here, you don't even know where you are going. You know why? You are just an arrow. <laughs> you are just an arrow in Christ, the bow. And God, the hunter, setting forth and is about to release. I see you fly. I said, I, I see you fly. <laughs> I see you fly. Sometimes when God begins to pull the arrow, he wants to hear if you still trust him. He wants to know if you still trust him. So the more you go back, because in this world, you have, you have come to understand that when retrogression is when people begin to go back. But in the books of God, when people begin to go back, it is not called retrogression. It is actually called advancement. <laughs> You know why? Because, you see, even when we take you back, you cannot stay there. Because the Bible said that he that is from above. I am above or I cannot be there. I am the head. I cannot be the tail. I can't be down there. Somebody shout, I am above. Don't advertise the devil. Look, I told you, even when you are sick, your stomach is paining you. Don't even say my stomach is paining me. You are advertising freely. Because the devil wants to know. And he's excited. He said, Lord, look at one of your sons. He is confessing wrongly. Because when we are weak, we say we are strong. When men say there's a casting down, we say there is, there, there is something we say. There is a word we say. Our words does not conform to the word. Our words are conformed to the word of God. So my stomach is pain. I can feel it. But I say, oh, thank God I am healed. Oh, thank God I am healed. That the spirit that raised Jesus dwells in my body and surges through my body. Oh, glory to Jesus. As I say, I'm still in pain, but I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, I am healed. Oh, I am healed. I will never say I am sick. For the devil to say, look at it. Look at him. Are you with me? Yeah. So the spirit, that's the law of first mention. It tells you the, the understanding, the identity, the purpose for which that thing was mentioned. You get it? Okay. So, in Psalm, 1, Psalm 91 verse 1, he mentioned two names. Elohim, Elion, and Shaddai. So, we want to find out when was the first time a leon was mentioned? Now, if we understand why and the purpose for a leon, then we can understand why David used a leon. That is how we study the word of God. It gives you the picture behind the whole thing. <laughs> because you see, a leon means most high. Right? So, most high, how will most high help you? It just gives you understanding, oh, God is, God is most high. But there is more to it. Let us find out the first time the word a leon was used. Then we can have a better picture and appreciate it. Check on pre. Voila. Okay. Bege dege de gaha. Zege lugu dibi kadayadaba. Kinoko loko shodaha. Sekon frakik dak dok sosiki hapata. Oh Jesus. Genesis 14. Verse 19. That is the first time the, 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 the word Elion was mentioned. So let's see what the definition of Elion is. And amazingly, most of the names, eh, it revolved around Abraham. That is why you must understand, study Abraham and see what was with Abraham. And he blessed, okay, let's start from verse 17. 
And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after he re his return from the slaughter of Chedoloma. <laughs> and, the and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's deal. Uh -huh. 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth. <laughs> so this is, this is the whole thing. God is about to show forth his name. But he preceded with a story. So, the king of Salem, Melchizedek, he brought forth bread and wine. When you see bread and wine, it tells you of one thing, communion. Which means Christ is about to be revealed. Because it is only in Christ we see we have communion. Because it is his body, it is his blood. So, the king came with Christ. <laughs> the introduction of Christ to Abraham. Remember, we are in chapter 14. So, the story of the night sky had not been told him yet. See, when you are, your body is sick, when you are sick, I keep telling you, it's not your spirit. <laughs> it is your body. And now your body has the life of God in it. And if the life of God is present, no sickness survives. So, the life in me permeates into my body. It swallows, it, it destroys... It debuckles sickness in my body. You know, I've taught you this thing. I've done it severally. Yes. People are sick. Do you remember the footballer that had? Yes. What was it? I think he couldn't even bend his knee. Yes. I didn't pray for him. I told him there is a life in him. Yes. And I said, you yourself, fetch the life from your spirit and release it. Then he was, maybe we have to show that video. Yeah. He was running around because it's gone. See, you have it, you are, you, you, and my stomach, and I'm, why are we not coming to church? My, my back. What happened to the life inside? Huh? Say, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. Say, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. Alright, so now that you know this, you go back to Genesis 17. Alright, so he says, uh-huh, and when Abraham was 99 years old, 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am. <laughs> I love the way he introduced. He said, I am the almighty God. That's another topic. He said, walk before me and, thou, and be thou perfect. Verse two. Then he said, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, why is God saying this? Why was it necessary for him to mention 99 years? It shows you the function of Shaddai. He waited until Abraham was weak in the flesh. He was fully grown that he couldn't, he couldn't do anything. His body was dead. And he decided to show forth his mighty works and power. A man that couldn't have a child physically for almost 99 years, Shaddai showed up. And he made his body young again. People of God, that's Jennifer Maushi Tetea. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in healing. Oh, I'm so thankful. So I was suffering from a backache and a very severe one, which started about five to six years ago. Any chance? 2014. Yes. I woke up one day and I couldn't expect my body. My ribs were hurting, so I was rushed to the hospital. And I was given an injection mm -hmm. for pain. So after that, every year, every other year, I have this pain, sometimes twice a year, sometimes three times a year. So it comes and it goes. So I'm on drugs. So I take painkillers, I do bounds, anything to make me feel comfortable. So for the past six years, you've been in this. Yeah.
Yes, and her bones are touching each other. Yes. They are wrapping, yeah. wrapping together. And usually occurs in old age. That's why mm. older women um, take um, osteo, whatever. Yes. yes, it usually happens in old age. Now, when you have severe pain, they usually start you from the basic uh, analgesics like uh, paracetamol and all that. But in her case, those things don't work. Mm. So she was put on an opioid. Um, I don't mention it, but she was put on an opioid, and that's the only thing that helps her to relieve the pain. To relieve that, the pain. Does it take the pain away completely? No, I have patients. I use hot, um, this kind of sprays, bombs, and all that. Is it your bag? I have pictures on them. Can I see? Yes. So after opioids, if you have pain and opioids don't work, the next is to use morphine. Or more what? Morphine. Would you be wrong? Yes, or clinical cooking. I took this three on Monday and yesterday. You took these three? Yes, I have to say just one a day. But I took these three on Monday and wow. yesterday. Then I have one. This is Tramapa. This is Tramadol. Tramadol? Yes, another type. Okay. Yes. Then this one um, is to soften the muscles so that I can feel relaxed. This one is two CDs 50 pesos for just one tablet, so I was able to. And I took one that was on my day. In addition to this? Yes, it is. Wow. Amazing. Have you, have you had uh, these are some of the bumps and deep heats. These are some of the drugs and my So you actually been living on drugs? Yes. For the past six years? Yes. It was so severe, I couldn't wear heels, I couldn't fetch water, I couldn't do things on my own whenever the chronic pain was in. I have been to hospitals, I have done so many um, Taking so many drugs, I have been on physio. I have I have had massage sections with so many doctors, and I wasn't getting any better result. But thanks be to God, I was invited by my senior staff, who is a colleague at work, to WSI. They followed him here, and by the grace of God, I was prayed for by the senior minister, and I I, I have been healed. I am healed. And I know this healing is permanent. So after receiving my healing, I am very fine. I am fit. I'm with no pain. I can do things on my own. Things I couldn't do before, lifting things, bending down. I'm free. I'm healed. I would like to encourage everyone to trust in the Lord and to trust in their healing process. I would like to um, encourage anybody who is going through the same situation, if you have any problem, please kindly um, visit the church. Wonderful things are happening. People are getting healed. The sick is getting healed. People are getting restored. People are getting blessed. There's healing here at WSI. Thank you. We trust you were blessed by this message from Prophet Donnie L. Jeddu. Worship with us in any of our weekly programs. Our weekly programs are as follows. Our Rima Night teaching service happens every Wednesday, at exactly 6 p.m. Your faith is built on the Rima of God as you hear His Word. Our Friday prophetic service is every Friday evening, at 6 p.m. There is a prophetic word for you from the Lord that will usher you into daily testimonies. Do not take yourself out. Our Sunday service is known as the Phronersis service and it's at 8 a.m. Phronersis is the, the highest form of wisdom that gives a different mindset. Phronersis, it's a mindset, live it. We would L like to fellowship with you in any or all of these services. Be our guest, you are blessed.